Hello everyone. Um, so today we're going to talk about vulval cancer. Now this is the ESCO guideline that I've summarized uh, because I think it's quite practical and it helps you with the actual um, application of the guideline in your um, current practice. So stay tuned and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So it um, advises um, that in the pre-op period, um, so before uh, the patient undergoes surgery, there should be clear documentation of the size of lesion, the distance to the midline, the clitoris, the distance to the anus, vagina, urethra, and there should be palpation of the lymph nodes. It should also involve evaluation of the cervix, the vagina, and the anus. A picture diagram of the actual tumour size, tumour location uh, or clinical drawing is advised. So prior to sentinel lymph node biopsy, clinical examination and imaging of the groin along with um, you know, ultrasound or PET CT or MRI should take place. Suspicious nodes at palpation and or, or imaging should be analysed by a fine needle aspiration or core biopsy. Um, further staging with CT, thorax, abdomen and pelvis is recommended if um, there's clinical suspicion or proven um, nodal metastases and or advanced stage disease. So surgical management, radical local excision is recommended vulvectomy if there is multifocal invasions. The goal of excision is to obtain tumour-free pathological margins. Surgical excision margins should be at least one centimetre. Um, they can be acceptable um, narrower uh, narrow margins can be acceptable if they're close to the midline structures like the clitoris, urethra and the anus. Invasive disease, if it extends to the excision margins of the primary tumour, then they need re-excision. So local treatments, so, so groin treatment should be performed for tumours that are more than stage uh, 1A. For unifocal tumours less than 4 centimetres without suspicious groin nodes uh, on clinical examination or imaging, imaging sentinel lymph node uh, procedure is recommended. For tumours greater than 4 centimetres or equal to 4 centimetres and or in case of multifocal invasive disease, uh, inguinal femoral lymphadenectomy by separate incisions is recommended. In lateral tumours, so medial border greater than one centimetre from the midline, ipsilateral inguinal femoral lymphadenectomy is recommended. Contralateral inguinal femoral lymphadenectomy may be performed when ipsilateral nodes show metastatic disease. When, lymph when lymphadenectomy is indicated, superficial and deep femoral nodes should be removed. Preservation of saphenous wane is recommended. In advanced stage, patients um, should be evaluated in an MDT setting to determine the optimal choice and treatment. Where, where enlarged, more than two centimeters pelvic nodes are identified, their removal should be considered. So sentinel lymph node procedure, so uh, for unifocal cancers at less than four centimetres without suspicious growing nodes, a radioactive tracer uh, substance is mandatory. Um, lymphocintogram uh, enables the pre-op identification, location and the number of sentinel lymph nodes. And if a sentinel lymph node is not found, then inguinofemoral lymphadenectomy should be performed. Um, where met metastatic disease is identified in the sentinel lymph nodes, inguinofemoral uh, lymphadenectomy in the groin with the metastatic sentinel lymph node should be done. For tumours involving the midline, bilateral sentinel lymph node dissection is mandatory. Where only unilateral sentinel lymph node uh, detection is achieved, inguinofemoral lymphadenectomy in the contralateral groin should be done. 
So radiation therapy, so adjuvant radio, should be started as soon as possible, ideally within six weeks of surgical treatment. When invasive disease extends to pathological excision margins of the primary tumour and further sex surgical excision is not possible, post-op radiotherapy should be considered and given. In case of closed but clear pathological margins, post-op vulvar radiotherapy is, is given to reduce frequency of local recurrence. Post-op radiotherapy to the groin is recommended for cases with greater than one metastatic lymph node and or and the presence of extracapsular lymph node uh, involvement. Adjuvant radiotherapy for metastatic groin nodes, so ipsilateral groin area and where pelvic nodes are non-suspicious on imaging, the distal part of the iliac lymph nodes with an upper limit at the level of the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. Based on evidence from other squamous cell cancers like cervical, for example, um, the addition of concomitant uh, radiosensitive chemotherapy to adjuvant radiotherapy should also be considered. So chemoradiation, so definitive chemoradiation, chemoradiation unresectable disease. In advanced stage disease where there is new adjuvant chemotherapy, avoid um, eccentration surgery. Uh, it normally could be weekly cisplatin, um, which is recommended. Treatment of recurrent disease, so radical local excision for vulval recurrences, depth of more than one millimeters and previous sentinel lymph node of removal only, inguinofemoral lymphadenectomy should be performed. Treatment of groin recurrence, uh, restaging by CT or PET CT of thorax, abdomen, pelvis recommended, radical excision um, if it's possible, followed by radiation in radiotherapy naive patients, so pa patients who have not previously been given radiotherapy, definitive chemo radio when surgical treatment is not possible. So treatment of distance metastases is with systemic palliative therapy. After primary surgical treatment, uh, follow-up usually is six to eight weeks post-op, first two years every, every three to four months, then third and fourth year is biannual, and after that, based on presence of vulval disease, further follow-up is advised. After definitive chemoradio chemoradiation, the, the, the following follow-up applies. So first follow-up should be 10 to 12 weeks post completion of definitive chemoradiation, first two years every three to four months, third and fourth year biannual, long-term follow-up is based on, um, again, presence of disease. Um, at the first follow-up visit, 10 to 12 weeks post uh, chemo radiation, CT scan or PET is recommended to document complete remission. Well, that's it. As I said, this, um, I really like this guideline because it's very, very um, clinically indicated. So I do think apart from learning for your MRCOG exams, this guideline can help you with application in your clinical practice as well. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.